This week, a continuation of our prior conversations about external sharing. This week, we're going to focus on Microsoft Teams, something we've been uh, we've been doing quite a bit out of. And this team that you see on screen um, has met in person precisely once, z- zero times in the last fourteen months. Oh yeah, fourteen months. Yeah. Sixteen months. Yeah. Sixteen but months. Once, but once in total in our whole lives, I think. Yeah. At, at Ignite. True. Ignite yeah. uh, 2018. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Time. So collaborating via Teams is something that's pretty uh, pretty near and dear to our heart. We run our we run our organization on it. We work with um, our clients that way a lot of times as well. So we broke it into about four different things, right? Like some things to look at at the tenant level, at the team level, at the channel level, and then some challenges that we face. We'd love to hear um, yours as well. And, and tackle some of those. Although we try to incorporate some of the pregame feedback we got from you via Emily's Twitter survey, et cetera, or the Aston Praxis Twitter survey. So we'll, we'll incorporate that, but please, uh, Julie, I'll count on you to keep me honest because I'm screen sharing with respect to the chat and uh, yep. keep the conversation going. On so it. Who, wants, who wants to start on the, on the tenant level? Todd, this is probably as the token IT pro yes. of, the, of the Sympraxians. <laughs> Do you want to talk through some of this? Yeah, yeah. So as with all, a lot of the security things, there are many lay- layers of security and it's kind of like a, a filter or a funnel or whatever. And so as we're talking about um, any of the things that you want to do, guest, external, whatever, it's important to know that at the tenant level, the tenant admin or the team's admin has to turn a couple of switches on or off. And we have uh, a couple of them in the team's admin center that, that we, we have to look at. And this part of it is differentiating between external users and guest users, which as uh, we were talking about this, um, you know, in our pregame thing, we could use either definition for either one of those words. Like I could argue that the definition for external user is a guest user and vice versa. So it, the, the terminology is uh, pretty insane. But the first thing that I wanted to make sure on this is that if you're trying to light things up in different places if it's not lit up or not lit up the way you think remember that it starts at the top and works uh, down from the tenant level and do we have a screenshot of what the guest and external stuff is i can't remember i don't think so the next slide is about the team level okay. so i think this is the only right. shot of the tenant level okay so um the important thing here is external access is less than you think that it is. And the, the external access is just the, the chatting, the Skype for business. And it's somebody else who's using Office 365 in their tenant, who's who's part of Microsoft's uh, big ecosystem. And you can tell there's not a lot of switches here to flip. Uh, really just, is it on? Um, and, oh, hey. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> uh, and whether uh, you can use Skype for Business and Teams or Consumer Skype, really just on or off. And then at the bottom there, you also have the option for allow list or block list domains. So the way that we have it here at Simpraxis, I think uh, those are both switched on and any domain can chat with us. But I know some other companies have it on, but you have to get your domain has to get allowed uh, to, to collaborate with them. But that's the external access. That's just Skype, Skype for business uh, and chatting and that kind of thing. External or excuse me, guest users are the ones, and it's too bad we don't have a screenshot of that because the guest access one is kind of the antithesis of this. There's about a zillion things in there that you can tweak. And we had a, a lot of fun Monday as we were talking about those, but it's things like, you know, can guest users do search and can guest users do this and that? Can guest users use emojis? And if guest users can use emojis, can they use the naughty emojis or just the tame emo- I mean, you really have fine tuning there. And now um, I can't use the naughty emojis anymore. Yeah, it's the we, giffies. Well, we turned that giffies. on purpose giffies, for you. Yes. Giffies, no, naughty yes, not, giffies. Is naughty. this where I'm supposed to rant about not letting guests delete yes. or edit messages? Yes. Okay. Yes. One of the, Wait, not yet. Not yet. We have no, it late. Not yet. Okay. Oh, I'm, oh, waiting. Oh, I'm, yeah. waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. But oh, my, my one contribution and I missed my cue. <laughs> Speaking of uh, living on Teams and collaborating live, I think if you hit next slide, Mike, if it captured it for you, I just added in the guest controls that Todd is talking about. I love Emily. Let's see what it did. <laughs> Woo! Do the best. Woo! Just in yeah. time. You just rode it on your white horse. <laughs> Thank God she's wearing graphic. white even. I love it. <laughs> um, it's so just you live. Can, <laughs> so you can see with the guests, we have a lot more uh, control over what they can and can't do. Not expecting you all to see this and memorize it all, but just kind of remember the concepts of the difference between external users and guest users, that they are two separate things. 
And with the guest users, that's really the thing that you're probably going to collaborate with the most and that there's a ton of different things. And I, and I bring this up also because chances are, if you're in this call, you are going to be a guest in somebody else's tenant. And so if you really want to uh, drop down one of those mature giphies and you're not able to, you'll know why. Um, or in Julie's case, the edit sent messages so that she's going to rant about later in today's show, uh, you'll know why that is, um, that you can't do that. So you can, you can help the other people along that. Um, and again, there's a lot, lots of things in here back on the slide, you know, that you can set policies, uh, at the tenant level about external sharing. And that's, you know, all that again, just kind of to, to bring in mind, there's a lot of tenant level things that you have to do first and I'll, uh, I'll let the next slide go. I've taken too much time. All right, let's talk. Let's talk about the next level down and uh, sharing at the team level and the, what we can configure there. I see a big shout out to Matt Wade here for the work he's done on this. Always, I feel like it's impossible to talk about the team level without talking about the Microsoft 365 group. So yeah. I'm sure we're we've beaten this one a little bit to death. But behind a team, there's always that Microsoft 365 group. We have owners and members only. Guests cannot be owners. And you can also choose to share that SharePoint site only. So you have a couple of different ways that you can control that access on the team level, assuming that at that tenant level, your organization has allowed that sharing. Now, tricky thing, if at the admin level, they don't allow external sharing in Teams, it's not necessarily blocking you from share externally sharing your SharePoint site that's associated with your team, because if you're an owner, you're a site collection admin. So be careful on that in your organization, depending on where you want those settings to be. It's complicated. <laughs> Let's so Emily, make are you saying that you could have a team, you could have a team and not be able to share the team, but you can go to the SharePoint site backed by that team and share the team, the SharePoint site? Just the SharePoint site. You're not going to be able to go around that team blocking at all. And that's something that you could do in other situations. Like, say, for example, some practices is collaborating internally when we were making our new logo and we have an external vendor. Maybe we don't want them to be part of our Microsoft team where we're chatting about it, but we do want them to be sharing in the SharePoint site only in that document library. So there's definitely reasons why you might want to do that share site only. Anything else at the team level, or do we drill into channels now? Yeah, let's let's make this more complicated. I think yeah, that's let's, yeah. Idea. You know, we need another level of <laughs> another level. We do. Just we do. Level. Really do. Okay, so private channels. Um, so I have a little screenshot of private channels at the top and then below just showing in a diagram what really happens. So the most important thing to know about these private channels is that it is reduced permissions, not expanded. So someone has to be part of that main Microsoft team first before you can add them into that private channel. That private channel will then come with its own SharePoint site. So that is not gonna be dropping those files into the other SharePoint site associated with the Microsoft 365 group that is back that original Microsoft team that you made. So it's a unique site collection. Correct. Yeah, Krista yep. is commenting that she's doing that kind of uh, limitation in her her uh, tenant, where they have teams that um, where a member can edit everything in the main document library, but then the connected SharePoint site has restricted SharePoint specific permissions on certain libraries. And I, I think that's probably a fine way to configure things. I, I don't have a problem with that. Where I get confused is the the private channel part of it. Like, I just wish that, I like Krista's solution, right? Like the document libraries are just there on the site and you don't have an associated channel for it. That feels like it just gets confusing fast. That's my opinion. I think there's a challenge with governance automation, right? When, when we start spawning all of these unique um, situational site collections, they tend to get, overlooked from an uh, from a governance point of view, a SharePoint governance point of view. So it's definitely, it's not impossible, but it's definitely a challenge. Yeah, yeah and right. Ruth had a question Great. in the chat about can you see that in the SharePoint admin and you cannot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right now you can't. You can get it via code like PowerShell or CSOM or whatever it is. You can get a listing of it. So it's not like it's not harvestable, but it's not obvious. That's- Is there a site template for it? Mom? Um, Krista has her hand uh, has her hand up very politely. I think. 
<laughs> no, it's fine. It, I, I just had a, a, a question actually about the private channels. I, I don't make a habit of using them simply because of those extra site collections and the whole site sprawl thing. We have enough, um, you know, rogue sites that I don't really need to add more to it. But is it true that uh, from my earlier dealings with the private channels, the site collection that it creates, is it a pared down version of a site collection? Does it, or does it have the full functionality of any SharePoint site? It looks like it has the same like web parts and document libraries lists all of that functionality, but it, you can't get to the site permissions or the site members there at all. So in okay. that respect, it's pared down. Okay, that may have been what I was seeing before. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I threw a a link in the chat that talked this Microsoft's documentation about private channel SharePoint sites. Uh, so somebody asked earlier if they have their own document template type. They do. Uh, it's team channel pound zero. It also mentions that they don't show up in the SharePoint management UI, but that you can get to it with the graph or with PowerShell, things like that. Covers some of that, uh, those questions that are coming up because they are not intuitive. They're just kind of a weird little deal. Yeah. Yeah. So now, now that we've explained why Todd can't see the personnel challenges uh, channel. <laughs> <in teams. laughs> what let's, the... let's talk a little bit about shared, shared channels and teams. So not quite here yet. Um, as you can see on April 14th on the screenshot on the right, they are saying that it's going to be coming out in November. Um, but the idea here is expanding permissions. So being able to have a shared channel and then having any of that those external guests have that appear right there in their tenant along with their other teams. So they don't have to do that teams tenant switching that drives us all bananas. And this is also known as Teams Connect. Yeah. This could be interesting. I, I'm it, reserving judgment. I think it, uh, any of us who've done anything with uh, information architecture in the past are scared, right? At the at the just the atomization of permissions at this level. Is that is that correct? I'm scared about being confused. Yeah. About where yeah. this is is like where you're coming from, and like uh, it's like when I'm developing and I have too many projects open and too many visual studio code windows and i start typing the wrong thing in the wrong place like i yeah. feel like that's just you know waiting to happen with this situation yeah. But. yeah i i welcome anything that makes the multiple team and identity piece suck less um <laughs> but yeah I'm, I'm i'm cautiously optimistic about this i don't know why you don't like things that suck I yeah I, 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 I just don't like stuff that sucks yeah I, <laughs> <laughs> Ruth, I agree. So, Ruth says sometimes I'm just scared. Yeah, so, yeah for, I, no, for, no, for no good reason. Well we're, said. we're here for you, Ruth. I, we'll hold I, your I, hand. I could, I could see some really ugly situations coming out of this one, though. Like, I'm now a member of you know 12 tenants that all have an HR channel, and I'm, I see all 12 HR, HR channels. Ooh. <laughs> I, I, I hope they come up with a way to make that clear. Because otherwise, you're <laughs> dropping stuff in the really messy places. Yeah, and to circle back yeah. on the whole multiple identities and how painful that is, I think I've said it before. The way that I've handled that is a two-pronged approach. I have uh, profiles for my different identities in Edge. And then in a profile for Edge, if you go to the Teams, you know, teams.microsoft.com and get the web interface, you can install that as an app. And so I have multiple Teams apps for multiple identities. Uh, and as terrible as that sounds, it is way less terrible than switching identities in the Teams client. It's just an alt-tab away then, right? Yeah, or, or yeah, and it's a, it's a link on my taskbar, so I have multiple ones. And yep. yeah. So let's take that let's take that um, that example a little bit farther. And I posted the wrong thing for HR Team One into what was supposed to be an HR Team Twelve. <laughs> Um, I think this is Julie's is it, rant. Is this I can it? edit, is I can edit that, right? Is this my turn? That? Go, Julie, go. <laughs> so the backstory here is I like went off for probably 15 minutes on Monday about how stupid this is because I think almost everybody in this call is an external member in the Microsoft tenant and the Microsoft tenant has their team settings so that a guest user cannot edit or delete a message they post in a channel or a com a chat or any of those things. So if you accidentally, you know, if you have like typos and you want to edit your message, you can't do that. 
if you accidentally hit return and you're not done yet, you kind of have to go, darn, sorry, guys, teams again and keep typing your message. Or if the worst case scenario happens and you accidentally, oh, I don't know, paste your password in the chat window and hit enter by accident, you know, like, Sorry. or yeah, any of those bad yeah. things, like <laughs> hypothetically, if that happened, you can't get rid of that. You have to go track down an internal employee, in this case at Microsoft, to go delete that message <laughs> for you. And I'm just... I, I get the point that there's like a potential benefit to like that, but I, I am not seeing it. I I <laughs> I don't see the benefit to that turning that off. So I think the take home message is if you're gonna turn that off, think through it, because I don't I don't know that it's a good thing. Okay. It, end of rant. It bad. It okay. bad. But if but if I have those those commonly named channels, like twelve channels called HR, I can I can still easily search across those, right, Emily? Nope. Another <laughs> rant. <laughs> Pull so, that string next. Nope. <laughs> this one's a bummer. It's not related to external access when it comes to the access perspective, but it does matter to the user experience. So unfortunately, when you search in Teams, if you search by the team name, it will only show you the general channel. And if you, you can't click on that team name to then expand or go to it, right? It's just reduced search. You just have that channel name. Now, let's say we were really smart and savvy and we have a bunch of consistent projects across all our different departments and we made a Teams template and we have a channel called Risks. And maybe I'm someone who's on a bunch of different projects. If I look up Risks, I'm only gonna get that channel returned, but depending on how many teams you have, Let's say you have 100 teams with the same channel name. You're going to have to scroll through them in that left nav in the order that they were made to be able to find your team with that risks channel. So essentially, the, the challenge that everyone complains about of filtering all of your teams in the left nav and being able to easily navigate between them, that search for those channels is pretty big. So be really thoughtful about your channel naming and maybe keeping it a little bit more unique will help solve this problem. So Emily, would it be something, and we may, you may have done this with Orchestry in the past, would it make sense to kind of concatenate um, team name hyphen channel name to solve that problem from an IA point of view, or is that messy too? That's a good question. I don't think I've thought through the solution enough on that yet, because okay. that brings a new challenge of when people are scanning and reading for the web, we read the first 11 characters. Mm. So now we're replacing one problem with a potential different problem. Right. String I, hyphen I will, string. Yeah. Yeah. And I will say I haven't seen this problem a lot across our clients, um, just one or two that really use those team templates consistently. So I think it's important to think about how many of these teams you're going to end up getting. So if you're a project-driven organization and you've templatized your team sites and your teams with common naming conventions, that could bite you a bit there until Microsoft does something to enhance the search experience. Right. And I, I have heard that they're they're aware of it and they're thinking about it. Okay. Yeah, if there were still a user voice, we could tell everyone just go on user voice and vote that up, right? We're not bitter, we're not bitter though. Mark, Mark uh, just had the comment. Oh, I feel like I, I like that fact. See the first eleven characters. Um, on the the eleven characters pinned to my head, uh, we have. I'm in a team where they name the channels over and over again, and they have a consistent naming scheme. But the first like thirty characters of the team name is always the same and it's the end of the team name that has the relevant information on which team i'm looking at don't do that <laughs> that's a that that is an it driven decision not a user experience driven decision. Uh, oh totally yeah. i'm just yeah, totally. i'm just pointing that out throwing us because i wanted to Let's... Okay. That's okay. actually not in this case but yes it's just somebody who didn't realize that that was going to end up being a problem consequence yeah yeah. Part the end. So uh, I know we have other common challenges. I wanted to take a break now that we've gotten our rants out of the way and ask: <laughs> if, Are there any comments in the in the discussion thread that we should attack before we talk about some of the other common challenges? I only had a question. I sort of answered it because I had a, a, an answer. But um, Greg uh, said, "Do you see a lot using the email to Teams channel?" I know it's not sharing, but just curious. Um, I had shared that we have a client that is a realty company who chats, does text messaging with their clients. And sometimes that's 
you know, relevant information that they want to save in the team. So they'll forward the text message to the email address of the channel uh, to save that information. So that's kind of kind of a useful way to do things. But I don't have any other insights. I'm not using I know I'm not seeing it at all. Yeah. yeah. All right, some other common challenges. Anybody got rants here? We talked about yours, Emily. I, I didn't realize that was a, it was a bullet in this slide. Sorry. <laughs> it's that nice to group them together. Too. Get over that hurdle, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, one question we get, which I think kind of relates to the the top two together, is whether you can have a visitor in Teams. So having someone just be able to read, and you cannot. Um, the intention of Teams is for you all to be collaborating. As I mentioned earlier, you can have that separation of maybe the visitor just needs to be an informed person on the outputs of this project. Maybe that's a situation where you wanna share the SharePoint site with them only and put them in read access there. Yeah, that that's a weird one. I get that a lot because I deal a lot with SharePoint you know, proficient people. And there is a visitor, a read only. Um, and on one hand, having somebody who can view your chats, but can't participate in them. Well, that's called lurking. And that's kind of creepy. We don't like those people. Uh, so on, on one hand, I can see why they don't want to have read only because it's like you're a ghost, you know, you're screaming into the ether. But on the other hand, Microsoft is positioning teams to be the place where all the, the documentation goes, all the knowledge goes. Uh, and so you might want to have a team where people have discussions and things are, but you can't give somebody read only. It's, it's not a great scenario, unfortunately. So I'm not sure how I feel about it. Well, I think those, the, that's, that's the, uh, an example where teams doesn't solve everything, even though Microsoft wants it to solve everything. <laughs> well, you know, yes, we, we, we don't have to be forcing everybody into teams, external users, internal users, uh, just sort of in general, it's, it should be the right tool for the right job. Yeah. Yep, I agree. Anything about um, the multiple experiences for external or guest authentication? You might have touched on it a bit, Todd, with the profile conversation. Yeah, I think that's probably the big piece. It's I can't just, even, I don't even know that we can totally talk to this because can do we have a consistent answer for any of this? I, oh, I mean, so, uh, so this was the one about Gmail versus uh, business accounts and all that, wasn't it? Is that yeah, the yeah. Weird thing is, I mean, we see we see different experiences as as, as we as a as a group go from tenant to tenant because we do that a lot, and sometimes we don't know if it's because of the kind of account we have or a setting that they've changed or a whatever. But yeah, I was more thinking about Mark to that point. I'm thinking about like we'll be on like a MVP chat. And some people will be like, I can't see the chat. Some people will right. can see the chat. This person can do this. That right. person can't do that. And it's and a lot of the time that that depends on where you initiated the call from. So yep. which yep, tenant you happen. were sitting yep. in at that time and whether you're using the browser or the team's client. And it, it yeah. I, I don't think it's consistent, to be honest. And then even not consistent because you'll get the, yeah, I am in the browser. Well, I'm in the browser right. and I'm seeing chat. Oh, I'm in the browser right. and I can't see chat, you know, that kind of thing. So, yeah. Yeah. So I agree that it's inconsistent, uh, but I also think with Mark, so I'm, I'm a fairly chatty guy in some of these things. And so I fight it and I found that, yeah, it depends a lot on where you know, your team's client is and whether you're connecting to it. So I just try back and forth. Like I'll be connected in both and I'll close and I'll change identity. I can usually wear it down to where I can chat in chat. Uh, but yeah, it's not consistent. You're very persistent. Todd. I got a lot to say, Julie, and I will not. Yeah. Uh, you will not be that shut down. Like, I gotcha. That no, <laughs> feels like way too much work. It really does. It shouldn't be that much work. Absolutely. It's ridiculous that it is. Yeah. We have some we, nice rants in the window. I'm impressed. Do we have any, gu any prescriptive <laughs> guidance for people who are guests in a lot of tenants? So there's the provisioning access to your stuff for guests. And then a lot of us are the guests, but we're guests maybe in three tenants concurrently. And we're working in each of them every day. Yeah. Julie, what do you hold up? <laughs> Tissues. For trying, trying, weeping out loud. All right. I guess I was, I was like, it is allergy season, so sure, yeah. <laughs> I guess the one thing I would say is that the guest experience, at least the notification part, works a lot better on mobile. Yeah. I think we talked about this last time, but 
I get all the notifications for all my chats on mobile. What was that, Julie? No, like, <laughs> no, it doesn't. no, what? Because right now I have a tenant that has some chat things and I switched to that tenant and I'm like, okay. And I read everything and then I switched out. And the notification goes away. And then about three seconds later, the notification comes back up again. You have two unread messages in that tenant. I'm like, Ugh! and I'm one of those people that can't have yes. read anything. Yeah. So it's yes. making me ma- like I've switched I, back and forth like 15 I, I times. Have, I'm like, please I, go away. I, I, I have that same away. problem. I have that same problem. There are two, two, the bubble says two in one of the tenants that I work in. And it's been two for the last six months. And. <laughs> And every time I leave the Sympraxis tenant and go into another tenant, the Sympraxis tenant tells me I've got one notification. So I immediately run back there because one of you might need me and there's nothing there. There's nothing there. Every single time. I, I didn't, I, I didn't say I don't experience that because I'm in the, I'm in the same boat oh, with you. Okay. I see the, I see the icon, but what I am saying is, you know, I've got some clients where I need to be, you know, logged into their machine or their tenant but I do have it on my phone. So my phone lets me know when somebody at client X messages me on Teams and then I can choose whether or not to respond, whether or not I'm in there, you know, whether or not I have that browser profile open or whatnot, I get I get the notification at least. I like. I also like where you get an email that says you've got a notification or that somebody tried to contact you in Teams three days after you never got a notification in the team's <laughs> client on your phone or on your desktop. So notification, uh, notifications to me don't seem to work just in general, other than in the Sim- Simpraxis tenant pretty much, but not always. Yeah. Yep. I've had that happen. Not, not got, that we're complaining or anything. But we've I, got a I, couple you know, minutes to the top of the hour. We spend a lot of time in other people's tenants, so it, we're external yeah. users from some perspective. Steve, Sorry, Steve had a question that might be a Todd question about thoughts about Azure AD B two B integration. I don't even so know if, that, if they still support B two B. Yeah, I don't know either. So that's the business to business stuff. So that is you know marrying your tenant with somebody else's tenant. I never really had many of our clients that needed that. And like Mike, I thought that went away or was replaced by something, but I can't remember exactly. So I uh, don't have any thoughts, Steve. I'll make a note to ask Dave about it because I think they used it at one of, at one of our clients. Yeah. Um, Dave Feldman might have some insight into that. Yeah, this is a recent, I'm looking at the link. It's SharePoint and OneDrive integration with Azure AD B2B. And yep. The article date is 17th. Wow, 17th two days of, ago. Okay. So, a lot's so happened it's... since then. <laughs> Tons, really. That's, that's weeks in Microsoft time. <laughs> All right. Are there any <laughs> virtually weeks? Um, there are. Are there any resources that we want to highlight them of from from among these to folks based on what we talked about? Um, the second one I would call out uh, when Todd was talking through a lot of that uh, guest versus external, they describe it in a uh, hilarious way on that app point blog right. with references to 90s TV shows. So if that's your thing, have a fun time. <laughs> yeah. Is the limit external exposure our, our, is that original content or is that from somewhere else as well? There, n- none of those are ours. They're all just okay. short links. I don't uh, think it was accidental exposure. It was northern exposure. <laughs> that was a good show. Yeah. The Sherman Wu had a confirm re com site bullet point. We can't invite external identities to SharePoint com sites, even for read only. Is this correct? That's what I'm seeing in my tests. No, because yeah. com sites, the, the access is with a SharePoint group. And you could certainly put an external user in a visitors, the visitors. If, if that's enabled at the tenant level. Site. Right. Right. The, the, right. The right. Yes. But I'm saying yeah. if you can let them in, then they could go in a read only group in a yep. yeah. site. That, that's right. what I thought, but it's not happening. My one demo really? tenant, uh, my one demo, demo tenancy isn't letting me put in my guest account that I've added through AAD. Yeah, it's just not even seeing. Well, it's Taylor Swift. Um, it's not seeing her. <laughs> well, that's your she problem right there. Did, did you did you try did you try unplugging one. it plugging it back in again? Is there a song about <laughs> you out there, Sherman? I, uh, yeah. Control delete. Uh, that's so interesting. It. it seems like <laughs> so, it works. So you're seeing it should work. It should. Yeah. yeah, because we've been doing it for some testing. We've been doing adding. Uh, but here's the here's the question for you too, though. Is 
how does the licensing work on that? Because there is no license, right? And right. does that is that kosher with Microsoft's licensing terms? Yes. Yeah. That's yes, it is. I it can't is. answer to the licensing terms part, but I know you can't license them. So, for example, if it's a comm site and you have stream on there, since there's no external sharing with stream, they'll never be able to see that content. Right. Yeah. There's other issues for sure. Yeah, Sherman, you know what? It. I think maybe I'm saying the wrong thing, too, because I think that the thing I'm thinking of, we were putting them in a group. In a, in a, in a security in a group? Or? Site. Yeah, like in a my, Microsoft 365 group. I, but we were doing it on the SharePoint site, so I was not thinking of the right thing. I actually can't say, yeah, you know what? I think you might be right. We, I would have to, but if you're testing it and it's not working, I suspect you're probably right. Yeah. Let's yeah. test that and get back. I think that'd be, yeah, I think, that'd be I think yeah, to reasonably interesting. I've test. stumped the Symprexians. <laughs> no, <that's laughs> not as hard as you might think. That, that's yeah. Let's easy. just be clear. I've at least caused chaos. Yes. <laughs> I, as Mike says in the chat, we knew you were trouble when you walked in. Hey, I'm <laughs> fearless. Fearless. <laughs> Okay, I got to go to another meeting. Thanks, as yep, always. Top of the uh, hour, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us. Talk to you in two weeks about the rest of, uh, of Microsoft 365. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Great rest of your week. See you.